Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF video, and a very exciting video at that, because we're going to be taking a closer look at the recently released teaser trailer for the FNAF movie. This came out very late last night, so while I did get a reaction video up and a little bit of analysis going on, I do want to still pop in today and get a fuller, more in-depth analysis video out for you guys. So quite frankly, there's just so much to talk about, let's not waste any more time if you're Excited for the FNAF movie teaser trailer. Don't forget to scroll down, tickle that sub button. And now, without further ado, let's begin the analysis. If you want to see my reaction to the teaser trailer, I'll leave that link down below. I've already done that. So, we're not going to watch it in full. We're going to go bit by bit starting at the beginning. And the first thing we get immediately off the bat is a VHS tape recording for Fazbear Entertainment. Let's let this lady speak quickly. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria, where fantasy and fun come to life. So she is kind of the, what appears to be brand new version of Phone Guy, kind of welcoming the brand new employees to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, giving them a run of the land, you know, what goes on in the pizzeria. And during this VHS recording, we can see everyone enjoying Freddy Fazbear's Pizza in the background. You got some kids enjoying their birthday party. Of course, you got the checkered board pattern along the walls. The entrance to the pizzeria as well, a poster for Freddy Fazbear, which again, we saw in a leaked behind the scenes picture of the set. So a whole bunch of kids. We got some arcade machines here, a an officially licensed Foxy plushie. It looks to be Sanchi, which is pretty amusing that that's actually in the film. Back here, you can see what appears to be the ball pit. You've got another poster featuring a kid, the Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria logo. Let's go forward a bit more. Another arcade machine, kids playing the arcades. Moving on now to the ball pit, which has become a staple for FNAF locations nowadays. Later on in the trailer, we are going to see Abby Fox into this ball pit or I guess she doesn't fall in it looks like she tries to hide in the ball pit hide away from the animatronics and that doesn't go so well you got some flashing lights on the wall and then this lady hits the showtime button a call back to the showtime button in help wanted this is also right next to the stage as you can see you got some steps leading up to the bright red curtains of the main stage and when she hits the showtime button hit it, guys. The curtains open up and we get revealed to us Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. These animatronics are incredible. Like I said many times by now, they were made by the Jim Henson's Creature Company. They did a fantastic job. If Actually, if you want a closer, more in-depth look at how these animatronics operate, my buddy 64th Gamer, who you may know as the creator of Faz Anim, actually did a very, very well in-depth video on how these fully fledged animatronics work. I'm gonna leave that link down below, it's amazing. But you can see like their mouths open and close, their eyelids go up and down here. They can turn left and right, as you can see from Freddy, as well as Bonnie. Bonnie's ears can go upright, they can go to the side. These guys can do like every movement under the sun. It's pretty incredible. Let's just look at that one more time. Look at that, like it's actually insane how well made those animatronics are. So the first like 10 seconds of this teaser trailer are everything that happens in the past. I'm also just now noticing the clouds in the background. You can see from the main, you know, FNAF 1 stage, you got the lights, of course. But then, all of a sudden, we cut to present time. As you can see, now the place is closed down. The sign has fallen over. They've taken off the art uh, for the logo of the building. It says close. The D is falling off. It It's all in ruin. If you're watching this video, it means you've been selected as Freddy's newest security guard. So once again, just more information that this brand new lady is kind of the replacement for a phone guy, which in my opinion is a little unfortunate. You know, she's doing a stellar job, but I think we were all kind of hoping for a Scott Cawthon cameo as phone guy, let's be honest here. But going back a bit after this shot of the abandoned building, we get a first look at Mike Schmidt being played by Josh Hutcherson. And oh my God, he... He looks phenomenal. Now, something to know is that in Daco's video, he talks briefly about the actual, how the set was arranged in real life, because if you don't know Daco and a few other YouTubers actually got to go on this set and visit it and hang out. And I believe Daco said in his video, this is the hallway to the, the office in the building, which would make sense. I'd assume Mike goes in, he gets all set up in the office, you know, he puts on the security guard vest, and then he goes out to the main showroom to get a proper feel for what the environment is like around the pizzeria. Continuing on what a crazy shot of him walking in right there look at that you can just see the confusion on his on his face like what is this place and then we get a shot of the dining area whole bunch of stuff going on here you can see a prize counter which according to baz another youtuber that got flown out to the set 
Some Daco Hex plushies are shown up there. They've made a few FNAF plushies in the past, so I can't wait to see what they look like in the film. You can also see the stained glass featuring the animatronic characters. You, of course, have some drawings made by the kids. Again, this is Mike coming out of the hallway that leads to the office. So presumably, right over here somewhere is going to be Pirate's Cove, and then off to this side of the, of the dining room is the main show stage. This appears to be the place where they prep the food, it looks like, or maybe a salad bar. This could either be the kitchen, because that is usually where it's located or the bathrooms there is an exit sign though so i'm not sure about either of them but anyways continuing on this is the dining room it looks insane you can see the checkered board flooring as well as like the stereotypical arcade confetti like flooring it means you've been selected and then we get a shot of mike actually taking a peek behind the curtain of the main show stage and just seeing bonnie standing there motionless i cannot imagine being mike in this scenario you just take a little peek behind the curtain because you know you're pretty curious like it's an abandoned you know pizzeria that was thriving in the 80s what could be you know what could be going on behind the mysterious curtain lo and behold you take a look and you got bonnie's bright blue face staring back at you well not staring back at you but just staring into nothing it's it's terrifying it's unsettling and then it cuts to him and his reaction he's like what the hell is this like what have i gotten myself into and then he takes a closer look at the other animatronics. Freddy, here you can see a bit more of their endoskeleton. Very, very identical to what the Endo-01 looks like in FNAF 1. So it's like not only did they nail the outside animatronic shells of, you know, Freddy, Bon, and Chica Foxy, they've also basically nailed the endoskeletons inside of the suits as well. That is insane. So you get a look at Freddy. A little bit of looks at Chica. You can see this is her beak, the bib right here. Carl the Cupcake, you can see his eyes poking out of the sockets. The candle actually lights up, as we've seen from the poster featuring Carl. And then, Mike goes on to turn on the power to the, to the location. Here you can see the Celebrate poster, which may just be spread all around the pizzeria, or uh, we also see it in the office, so maybe this power switch is in the office. But he goes to turn it on, and the whole building comes to life. Look at that. That's such an amazing sequence. I love the look of that sequence. So he flips it. You can see the lights on the sign outside light up. For probably the first time in decades. I mean, just look at the overgrowth on the sign. As it flashes back to life. Oh, dude, it looks so, so cool. And then we get the reveal of the office. Very quickly behind my face cam, you can see the Celebrate poster. As I mentioned, there is a tiny difference. Looks like Bonnie's guitar has been slightly edited uh, to include the non-copyrighted version of his guitar. But what's fascinating about that poster is that that is the poster from, you know, the video game FNAF 1. It doesn't feature the real life versions of the animatronics, which is a little confusing, but I'll let it slide because it's a nice Easter egg for the fans, you know? But you've got the fan, you've got uh, a soda drink, you've got the phone as well, so maybe still holding out hope for that Scott Cawthon phone guy Easter egg. On the wall, you can see some papers written and left by the management of the pizzeria. You can see, you know, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, uh, thank you, management, I think it says. This one features the illustrations of the characters, as well as a bit more of the text. But obviously, the main thing we've got to focus on are the cameras, because they have changed drastically for this live-action film. Not only are they no longer on a flip-up monitor like they are in FNAF 1, it is a uh, pretty simple, just security camera setup with monitors for each camera. There are some cameras that make a comeback that we saw in FNAF 1, such as the supply closet, as well as the dining area, though there are some brand new locations like the outside of the pizzeria the parking lot you know these corridors which according to i believe it was baz these are actual tunnels beneath the pizzeria or at least tunnels that connect you know different locations of the pizzeria so i wonder how that new location is going to play into the film we do see a better glimpse of it uh, later on in the trailer that we're going to talk about but you've also got i believe this is the parts and service room an outside shot of the main stage and what's so fascinating about this new adaptation for the cameras is that it's faithful to what they would be like during this time period, you know? Like, this is a classic system to sort through all these different cameras with the with all the buttons and the stick right here. So I am very, very excited to, to see how that plays out. And of course, you know, there are multiple cameras on at the same time. Something that we've never been able to do in a FNAF game, so I wonder how this is going to affect the <laughs> quote-unquote gameplay. I almost said gameplay there. But like now, if let's say Freddy's on this camera, and Chica's, you know, maybe on this gate camera, if Freddy's moving and Chica's moving, Mike can see both those movements at the same time. So that's going to be interesting. I wonder how they're going to play with that 
you know, brand new addition to the camera system. Moving on, this is a classic shot. Dude, when I saw this during the trailer, I almost teared up, honest to God. Here, we can see a iconic still from FNAF 1, the main show stage camera featuring Bonnie, Chica, and Freddy, all in their respective placements. Though a little bit of a nitpick, Chica is holding the cupcake in the wrong hand, so this film has become unwatchable. I'm just kidding, of course. But it looks absolutely insane. I genuinely cannot believe how amazing that looks. And you gotta remember, again, these are full-scale animatronic characters that, you know, the Jim Henson's Creature Company made for this film. Though That's not CGI, that's not rendered, those are legit full-scale animatronics. So an amazing shot there, amazing callback to the first game. You also have the supply closet, which is also sh uh, strikingly similar to what it looks like in FNAF 1. Behind my camera, you got a bit uh, more clearer shot of the tunnels. Again, they come up later on in the video, but we're about halfway done, so let's keep on going. Hello? <laughs> Oh, what a no- Mike, you don't even know what you're getting yourself into. So he goes, hello, as he slowly looks around the dining area, not knowing what lurks behind him. It looks like he's still wearing that same vest, so maybe this is still when he's first exploring. Maybe this is after he peeks open the open the, uh, the curtain, and Freddy's like, oh, someone's here. Let's have a little fun, you know? But definitely a very, very creepy scene nonetheless. I, I feel so bad for Mike. He's so unaware in this scene. <laughs> I, I hope nothing bad happens to him. I hope nothing bad happens to any of these characters. We're going to have so much fun together. So next up, I feel like this is a pretty basic scene of probably just the ending for the VHS tape, which by the way, uh, she does have a name tag. I can't make out what exactly it says though, but she does have a name tag, which features the logo of the pizzeria, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place in this film, a whole bunch of pins on her vest as well. Of course, you got Let's Eat. It looks like this is a Freddy pin, a Bonnie pin, maybe a Chica pin, Foxy pin, checkered board pattern, as well as a group picture of all of them. And then we get probably one of the most shocking scenes of the teaser together like a freaking spring lock saw trap like what the hell is going on here you know now Docco, i saw this in his analysis video he made a very very smart observation this is not mike in the scene this is a different security guard. You can tell from the outfit and someone we're going to see later on. But this is most likely the first security guard that works at the at the pizzeria who, I mean, from this scene probably dies. But you can see this, like, torture device. I believe one of the workers at Jim Henson's Creature Company called it, like, the torture device, like, which is insane. But he gets strapped in over his chest, over his hands. This is an interesting shot. I don't know if they've edited this for the trailer. Because this is Mike. You know, this is the... This is Josh's face. He's looking into this contraption. But the outfit he's wearing, or whoever this person is, is wearing in this shot is actually... I'm just going to spoil it. It's actually this character. Who... I mean, you can tell with the with the it's the exact same outfit you know i don't know if they've edited this shot for the trailer but i feel like it's definitely um this guy who's getting <laughs> absolutely mauled to death by this contraption which by the way these spinny things we did actually see in the leaked picture for i'm not going to say what character but there was a leaked uh image of a animatronic mask and on the table at jim henson's shop they had these little spinny things so it's crazy that we saw that months ago and we just thought nothing of it but i don't know what this is i think right now the most likely explanation is this is some form of spring lock system in the in the animatronics though what's difficult about that is that of course the fnaf 1 animatronics are not spring lock operated they're just regular animatronic suits you know they're not uh spring lock suits so maybe this isn't one of the fnaf 1 animatronics maybe this isn't uh freddy or bonnie like some people are speculating maybe this is a entire Entirely different suit uh you know an actual spring lock suit fred bear spring bonnie i have no clue or who knows this could just be some weird obscure you know system that these animatronics have in place in their mouths uh i don't know why they'd have it though i don't know how it fit in there especially but yeah honestly i'd love to know what are your thoughts on this what are your theories do you think this is a spring lock system do you think this is just a random animatronic that's going to be used to torture these these security guards so continuing on, this is the corridor shot. These are the tunnels. You can see a shadow of Foxy 
his silhouette, uh, uh, you know, on the wall. So I'm hoping with the silhouette, we're going to get a very intense chase sequence through these corridors with Foxy and some character. Because I, I just want to see Foxy sprint, honestly. If he doesn't sprint at someone in this film, I will be very disappointed. And long tunnels like this, I mean, it's a perfect place to have a chase sequence like that. Anyways, we get a shot of Abby, played by Piper Rubio. Uh, most likely also when they're first exploring the pizzeria. Looks like she's kind of looking around, but specifically she's looking dead ahead and she's looking up. That's an important thing to note. She's looking forward and she's looking up slightly. Most likely... Because Freddy's current has opened and she's seeing him for the very first time. That is a creepy shot of his eyes glowing, right? Probably as he meets Abby. Look at that. Oh, they look bloodshot too. I don't like that effect. It's creepy, man. Yeah, I'd assume this is when Abby and Freddy meet for the first time. And apparently, maybe they're going to form some sort of relationship during this film. As we've seen from that teaser Blumhouse put out uh, back in May, I think I want to say, with them holding hands outside the pizzeria. Again, that could be for just promotional material, and it means nothing in the film. It could be some weird connection Abby has to the spirits of the dead kids inside the animatronics. We're just gonna have to wait and find out. But continuing on, we get Elizabeth Lail as Vanessa Monroe, who in this film ad adaptation is now a cop. And she shows up, presumably like in the middle of the night or sometime earlier on in the night, and gives Michael the rundown on what's going on, how they can survive. And basically the three of them, Mike, Abby, Vanessa, need to survive the night. So uh, in the shot, she gives a pretty concerning look. So I'd assume that's when she's giving, you know, the monologue of like, oh, this is what happened. There's dead kids, you know, they're killing anyone in sight. And she looks up, she's like, we're going to have to survive five nights at Freddy's. If she doesn't say that line again, disappointed. <laughs> but moving on now, we get probably, again, I'm going <laughs> to keep saying it. One of the most interesting shots of the film, because I don't think this is real. I don't see why Michael would... Number one, just be out in the woods. Number two, just see these kids out in the woods. All of which look strikingly similar to their animatronic counterparts. I'm forgetting most of these kids' names. I apologize. I know one of them is Grant Feely, Lucas Grant, and Jophiel Love. But I can't remember. I apologize. Which one is Lucas Grant and which one is Grant Feely? But you can see all these characters have a an accessory that they're wearing that corresponds to each of the animatronics. This character over here on the far left, as you can see, has some bunny ears. Most likely this is the child that possesses Bonnie. Right here, you can see this character is wearing a, uh, you know, just classic brown shirt. Obviously for Freddy Fazbear, this character in the middle has a red slash orangey kind of shirt, as well as what appears to be a hook for a hand. So Foxy, the uh, girl on the far right, is obviously Chica with the uh, all around yellow as well as the white in the middle and we don't see much of this middle kid besides this scene where they're all running away presumably when Mike turns around and looks at them but we can see they're wearing a gigantic <laughs> white top hat as well as a shirt with yellow and white stripes so I'm assuming based on a later scene here it is well, okay, well, first up, we have <laughs> Matthew Lillard as William Afton in this film. An interesting take on the character. I'm not sure if I like the glasses a whole lot, um, but he does look very formal in a office environment, which is interesting. So based on this scene, I feel like Afton's going to have a more like business kind of focused role in the film rather than I'm a, you know, murderer. I'm going to go around killing everyone. Unless this is just like one scene out of many he has in the film where he is actually going around trying to stabby stab. I, of course, think we're going to get that scene. But based on this one scene they're showing us for William, this is the only scene we get for Will. Again, I feel like they're, they're trying to push a more business, more like uh, formal introduction, at least for the character. And I mean... Uh, that's kind of what Will was in the games anyway. He was the business partner for Henry when they founded Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He was like the uh, the brains behind the operations. So I guess it makes sense. But anyways, going back to the woods. This scene in particular, we'll get to you in a second. We've already talked about you actually. This scene in particular where the camera slowly, well not slowly, but pans up from Mike as he's like 
frantically like you know freaking out on the floor of the ground this is basically what i imagine them saying like this isn't real like he's dreaming or he's having a nightmare or he's having these visions of the children and that zoom out is them trying to you know tell us that i'm sure in the actual film it'll, it'll be a bit more obvious but i think just in case for this trailer they threw that scene in there to again this isn't real he's seeing these children they're actually dead and then we get this guy who, again, I feel like will be the opening kill of the security guard who's trying to run to the exit. You can see the exit sign. He's he's just barely going to make it, but then probably gets attacked by, again, the spring lock system. This thing gets killed, and that's why Mike comes in as the brand new security guard, because the last one kind of died. Anyways, a few more scenes. Let's keep on going. We got Foxy stomping a, a ball pit ball. In a pretty goofy manner, I'm not gonna lie, his his legs a little flimsy. We don't get many shots of Foxy, but what we do get, we'll take, because he has a fantastic design from what we've seen in the trailer as well as the poster. So yeah, just a very menacing shot of his foot slamming down on a ball pit ball. <laughs> it's a little goofy, I'll admit. So some parts of the trailers are it's a little goofy, a little cheesy. We'll get there. I know a lot of people are like, Ugh, the red eyes. And then we got Abby hiding in the ball pit which is just a very very tense moment overall and then we get foxy looking down at abby you can tell from the uh you know eye patch covering one eye the snout the big like dog uh, like canine nose and then we get two shots of freddy fazbear and Bonnie. So a lot of people have been talking about the red eyes. Oh, the red eyes ruin it. Why do they why do they go red eyes? It looks so cheesy and goofy and and dumb and stupid. I think this was just their way of showing these characters are evil and spooky and they're out to get you, which admittedly is pretty cheesy, is pretty stereotypical for evil, you know, sentient characters. Personally, it doesn't bother me all too much as long as they don't have the red eyes throughout like the entire film, I feel like I'll be pretty fine with that. But yeah, I think for what it's worth, it doesn't look too bad. If they are going with the glowing red eyes, I wish they glue a bit more, you know? It looks like they just have, like, a few LEDs in the back of the suit that, like, um, shine through the material they use to make the eyeballs. So, I wish, if anything, they glue a bit more, or... Uh, I don't know. Personally, a few of the edits I've seen on, like, Twitter and Discord where they make the eyes black with, like, the one dot, uh, of, of whiteness to represent, like, the endo eyes, I'm not that big a fan of, so, I mean, maybe that's a hot take, I don't know. But the red eyes don't bother me all that much. I'd love to know, again, what are your thoughts on the red eyes? I know it's a pretty controversial choice, at least based off a few, you know, tweets and Discord messages I've seen. But frankly, that was the entire FNAF movie trailer analyzed. Again, can't believe it's here. What the actual hell? A phenomenal teaser trailer. It is blowing, like, everyone's minds. The numbers have been doing insanely well across all social medias. It's, like, number one trending on YouTube right now, which is insane. So, just massive congratulations to Scott, Jason, Emma, Seth, uh, you know, the Jim Henson Creature Company, everyone at Blumhouse, Universal, Peacock, all the actors and the cast and the crew and, uh, you know... It's so amazing to finally get this teaser, and it feels like we don't deserve this, you know? <laughs> like, it looks so good, at least to me. I'm, I'm blown away, honestly. Like, at several points watching this back, at, back to back, I'm like, dude, I could tear up right now. I doubt anyone on the cast or crew is watching this, but if you are, you're doing an incredible job. Like, sincerely, thank you so much for your hard work on this film. Because even just, like, this 50-second long teaser has the entire community, like, <laughs> flipping out. Like, uh, it's been an insane, like, less than a day so far. This is absolutely one of the highlights uh, in the FNAF community. And it's just, it's super surreal that, you know, the time has finally come for the FNAF movie. We actually got a FNAF trailer on freaking Universal Pictures' you know, social media, so... It's been a pretty surreal thing. 
and I'm just, I'm so happy, man. Anyways, I'm gonna close it out before I actually start tearing up on camera, Jesus Christ. I'll probably have another video going over some secrets and Easter eggs, because there were a few other things that I noticed, and I've heard a few other people talk about that I do also want to touch upon. So hopefully tomorrow, or sometime this week, because it has been an eventful past couple of days, <laughs> I might need a bit of a break. But hopefully pretty soon I can get another analysis and kind of theorize video out for you guys, because... That would be certainly very interesting. But I'd love to know what your thoughts and theories and everything on the official teaser trailer. Thank you so much for watching this analysis video, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.